it's three and a half years into the implementation of Vision 2030. What are some of the tangible developments that have been achieved to date? Three and a half years down the road, I think we've made tremendous progress. Um, let me start, you know, the, the notion of a 20-year plan was very new to us three and a half years ago. We'd always had five-year plans. So the mere fact that we have had it entrenched in the public, you know, the entire government is now aligned to Vision 2030. Every ministry, every government corporation has a strategic plan aligned to Vision 2030. They've all identified flagship projects that are going to fuel Vision 2030. That's done. The public has also gotten to begin to familiarize itself with Vision 2030. We still have some work to do in order to get full understanding and ownership. But that's well understood because it's, it, 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 was a comp it was a new phenomenon for most Kenyans. So that was the most important thing. Secondly, mindset changes. We now have, for instance, if I start with uh, infrastructure, uh, we have had significant progress in roads. Uh, we have uh, expressways being, we have the first expressway ever in this part of the world to be complete in a few months' time. We've, you know, uh, a super highway, so to speak. And it's not just the infrastructure, not super highway, but the mindset change that comes with it, the can-do attitude, the feeling that if this, we can actually do this in this country, that's critical to Vision 2030. Same thing in, IC, in IT, fiber, we're, we're fiber networking the, the entire country. We now have three undersea cables connected to the rest of the world, where we had zero three and a half years ago. We are going to make sure that every county in this country is fiber networked by December of this year, of 2012. Um, if you look at uh, uh, energy, rural electrification, we're planning to make sure that every village and every market is electrified by, 20, by the end of 2012, um, actually. Now, beyond that, ports, we are dredging um, our main port, the Mombasa port, deepening the harbor for larger ships to come in, building a second container terminal. We are also refurbishing our airport, and we have plans to build a brand new airport um, underway. The groundbreaking of a new port in Lamu is a highlight for Kenya this year. What are some of the other flagship projects currently underway? Judicial reform, electoral reform, police reforms, all those are flagship projects. The ones that I've mentioned also under infrastructure in terms of Solamu is one, the Lapset Corridor is one, um, but also rural electrification, energy, geothermal energy. We're focusing a lot on increasing the energy uh, sufficient on, on, on making this country energy self-sufficient, and we have to do undertake quantum jumps in energy. In terms of Kenya's economic outlook, what effect is Vision 2030 having? Vision 2030, by design, uh, by definition, is a long-term project. And indeed, the reason why it was mooted was because the, feel, it, the feeling was that by focusing constantly on five-year projects, we were never able to undertake the kind of significant transformative projects that by design require a long gestation period, a period that goes beyond the five-year political cycles. So we are only in the first three and a half years. We're only now laying the foundations and commencing the projects. So the impact um, will be felt a little way down the road, but clearly, there is already a significant impact in terms of, as I said, some of the projects that we have undertaken under the political pillar, under the infrastructure pillar, already are impacting the economy, the national psyche. But more importantly, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of the economic outlook, we are laying the foundations that will be felt three, four, five years down the road. What key sectors have been identified to achieve the 10% growth envisaged? The sectors that we hope will gene up the kind of jobs we need, the kind of economic growth we need are the six. Agriculture, tourism, manufacturing, trade, financial services, and IT-enabled services. In each of these, there are specific programs, projects, initiatives of different diverse skills, policy reforms, regulatory frameworks, specific economic projects, infrastructure projects within them, all of which combined in totality will see this country move from a third world country into an upper middle income country by 2030, and also yield enough decent jobs that most people who have had a decent education, which the social pillar will be affording them, will be able to either have a job for themselves or engage in entrepreneurial activity. And projected costs going forward? It's a huge bill. And, 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 and look, and these figures vary because nearly 70%, if not more, more than 70% of Vision 2030 will actually be implemented by the private sector. In many cases, the government will merely be facilitating uh, the private sector. If you take one of the biggest projects that we're about to, two of the biggest projects we're about to launch now, Lapset Corridor, um, the port, the government may initiate the port but may invite private sector to participate in completing the full uh, 32 bath port. 
the, the resort cities, uh, the pipeline, all those could be private sector um, uh, initiatives. Konza Technology City, while the government owns the land, and we they will lease it out to people to put up hotels and schools and a financial district. So if I was to think about the bill, it's difficult because part of it will be government, part of it will be private sector. But it is definitely, between now and 2030, we have to spend definitely a minimum of about $100 billion. So the big question, what opportunities are there for foreign direct investment? The opportunities are significant. It, the Lambo Corridor project that I've just spoken about, we're talking about a pipeline. We want private sector to come and build that pipeline. We're talking about a port where well, the government will initiate the port but will invite private sector to come in and invest. The resort cities, there's five resort cities envisaged uh, in Vision 2030. There's a Siolo Resort City, Central Kenya, two at the coast, Diani Kilifi, and then two in Northern Kenya, Lamu and Turkana. We want people to come and put up hotels and all, all sorts of entertainment centers and activities um, in these resort centers. Kenya really is open for business. Kenya is a free market, uh, has been a free market for a long time. Uh, you, can put, you can bring in a billion shillings in the morning and take out a billion shillings in the afternoon without any major restrictions. It's a free and easy country within which to invest and, 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 and withdraw your investment. So really, uh, Vision 2030 in a nutshell is geared towards encouraging FDI.